So challenges of life. And this is this these points you see on the screen, among many, are the reasons why Garden City decided that we should have to in, we have to introduce some other courses in your curriculum, just to empower you to become the best sort of that person after school. Because many of us, even though we are working full time in some facility or hospitals and all that, we see that we wish, really wish that we could we, we could start something by the side, some business by the side to help us to make some in extra income or maybe even to follow our passion to bring some solution to the society. So these among many challenges are the reason why we started and say, no, can we do something extra for our students so that they can be the best people that we really want them to be? So let's look at a few challenges that we see in life. Number one is increasing desire by many to start and manage their own businesses. And I'm sure many of us on this call, even though we are nurses, we are midwives, we are health professionals, many of us have some side business. How did that happen? It happened because number one, you found an idea that you want to pursue. Number two, you want to make some additional income. And number three, many of us have some deep-seated talents and gifts that you want to bring it out to help people. But many times, even though we have all these things with us that we want to bring out to help other people, we are not able to put it together well in some business structure. And as a result, we do it anyhow. Uh, once in a while, we make some money. Once in a while, we make some impact. And there's no structure that goes with it. So this course is meant to help us to be able to build some business by the side, even if you are taking your job full-time. And the main reason behind that game is that to make sure that we are able to build entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs. And I'll explain that as we move along with it. The second thing is that the, the limited and keenly competitive, competitive corporate jobs, even jobs that are available, they are very competitive, extremely competitive. And I'm sure nurses and midwives at some point, you wouldn't even need to go for interviews when you finish school. But now some places you have to go for interviews before you're admitted and have a job. So how do you equip yourself to make yourself better? Again, there's some increased desire for freedom from corporate life. A lot of people are tired from a nine to five job. A lot of people, a lot of people. I mean, um, I have a friend, I went to finish visit one of my friends recently in Accra, and um, by four, no, 3.30, everybody in the house were, were, were awake, even including a two-year-old child. Two-year-old, by 3.30, the child is out because they have to do everything and leave the house by 5 a.m. Otherwise, traffic. People are tired. People are really tired. People are looking for other avenues to, to improve upon themselves. People are looking for other avenues to make sure that they're able to do other things to make their life meaningful as they want it to be. And of course, the high cost of living and life frustrations. Life is getting too frustrating, frustrated, and people are tired of a lot of things. So how can we expose ourselves to some other ideas, some other opportunities for us to get ourselves better? And that's the reason why this course was actually instituted. And basically, this is what happened to us. Once you finish school as an individual, you either start your own business or you work for somebody else. If you work for yourself, you are an entrepreneur. If you work for somebody else, you are an employee. Now, for the employee and for the entrepreneur, that's where we are saying that yeah. how do you become one? And for the person working for somebody else as employee, how do you become an intrapreneur? An intrapreneur is such that you do the work so well to the point where you are paid well, you are promoted, you invest and save some money. You make so many investments that one day when you retire and go on pension, you'll be able to live better lives and then um, don't get frustrated and just die just like that. Okay. So we want to talk about the, the definition of entrepreneurship. Please, whoever is drawing lines on the screen, I beg you stop. Because you are, we are recording this and we're going to share it to you again. If you start writing this on the screen, there's no way we can share it back to you. So please stop this. Okay. All right, so I want somebody to volunteer to read what you see on the screen for me. Anybody wants to volunteer? I want to touch on a few, um, uh, break up, and I'll go back straight to talk about my topic today. Yes, please, sir. Please go ahead. The ability to identify a need or a problem in society and organize the needed resources. That is money, people technology to create a solution and package it for a specified target customer in an exchange of reward in the face of risk and uncertainty. Thank you very much, Lydia. So basically, entrepreneurship is one, to be able to identify a problem in society okay. or to be able to um, look for challenges and whatever in society that people are really bothered about. And then you for resources and you capitalize on that resources to build a business with it. And then once that business is built, the end, the end result is that you're able to provide a solution. And this solution that you're providing could be a product or it could be a service. And that product or service has been packaged, has to be sold or given to a group of customers who need it. 
And then once they get it and they use it, they like it, they now reward you either financially or unfinancially. That's the basic of entrepreneurship. I'm going to show you some few examples. But in trying to do all these, it is risky. And we talked about this last week. It's very risky. Entrepreneurship is very, very, very risky. And we should be mindful of that fact that it's risky. And as a result, we should find a way to resolve all those things and, and, and make sure we stay in business. We don't lose our money. And then we said that entrepreneur is the person who does all these things. We talked about it last week. And we also said that the most important thing about entrepreneurship is that you should always find ways and means and solutions and products and services to make life better, to make life easier, to make life faster, to make life cheaper, or make mark, relatively cheaper, and most importantly, to make life and everything that we do very convenient. Once all these five criteria are solely infused in whatever you do as a person or as an entrepreneur, eventually you begin, you begin to give people what they're really looking for and you pay them money for it. And I think last week we gave example with Uber, we thought before Uber came, we thought taxi was our best thing. I mean, somebody take drop in and it sits at the back as if, you know, you actually sit in the front, you take drop in. And you sit alone in the car, you feel that you are the king, you are the queen. Until Uber came, we noticed that, Charlie, even though we had a solution, it wasn't the best. How can you not think of five years? So Uber, Uber actually <laughs> came to make it better for all of us to really exactly. enjoy life and enjoy our transportation currently. It was recently that I even saw another app that, so for example, if I have um, goods in Tema, that I want to transport them to Burkina Faso. I don't need to go to Tema to do all this. There's another platform where you can actually book for trucks like that, big trucks that can take your products from wherever in the world, in Ghana to anywhere in Ghana. I was I was so happy with it. Because I saw now somebody can live in Burkina Faso. He had, they have cleared his goods in Burkina Faso and they just go and up, get it, get, send a location to the person. The person goes to load everything up, drive all the way to Burkina Faso and he gets there and they pay them. And the interesting bit about that app is even that once the good are, goods are loaded in the truck and the trucks are moving, that truck is 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 um is under the radar of the sat of a satellite, and the owner of the goods in Burkina Faso can track the car every single moment where the car is. It can even if it can even track how many people are even sitting in the car, for the location of the car, the speed that the car is going, you know, and that's 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 amazing. This has made life better. It has made life easier. It has made life faster. It made life relatively cheaper. And most importantly, life has become very, very convenient. This is the power of entrepreneurship. And that's what the kind of thing I want to expose you to this, this semester. Okay. And uh, I don't remember if we did this example. So let me show you a few examples for those of us who were not in class last week. So for example, we all know how we used to do fufu. This is stressful. Look at the guy. He's not even wearing slippers. I mean, above all this, he has to now do all this hard work. Just, just enjoy this food. And unfortunately, look at the cat sitting on the chair. The cat is comfortably sitting, sitting look, waiting for their bosses to finish the food for, for him to, for to enjoy. Look at him, he's struggling. And this can take a minimum of about two hours, if I'm not lying. About two hours to do this. Prepare the soup, get the cassava, get the plantain, boil it, get it on together and start pounding. I mean, this is stressful. So imagine that, imagine that husband and wife are both, let's say the husband is a medical doctor and the wife is a nurse. You all work in a hospital, very stressful work. You go to work five and um, nine in the morning and close at five. What time are we are you guys going to get together to go and buy cassava, buy this and prepare this for food? Somebody sits down and says, No, 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 we can have a solution to this. So quickly they came up with need for food. Even though people have their own perceptions and their taste preferences for need for food, but the point is that need for food has come to dramatically improve the way we used to eat our fufu. Of course, there are some people who would say, I would say that no matter what you do, I'm always going to eat my fufu as it is. You like just, just like my father. My father said that fufu they no one say I will see. You can fufu, you will fufu. You know, I mean that those are individual preference. But the point is that somebody has made life better, he has made life easier, he has made life cheaper, he must live make life much, much more convenient for all of us. Let's look at this one too. But this is a picture of a lady that I personally work with. She's called Mahamdia. I work for um, an NGO called SNV. It's a Netherlands embassy, Netherlands social organization, uh, organization here in Ghana. And their main motive is to look for innovative solutions um, of individuals and sponsor them. So this lady's story basically came up because when she went to do her service in the north, I think either upper west or upper east, upper east, it was upper east. And then she was teaching in the primary school. And she noticed that at some point in the month, most of the very brilliant ladies in the class wouldn't come to class. So she was worried. She'll find out later 
that these ladies during their menstrual days, they are not able to come because they didn't have money to buy a card. And if you are able to get something to, 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 to protect themselves when they come to school, they get themselves soiled and the boys will be laughing at them. She got very worried. And again, today we are talking, we are going to talk about how to identify business opportunities. This lady's opportunity came because of the environment where she found herself in. And I'm telling you this, that anytime anybody is able to find a problem and find a solution to it, you would make money. And I'll tell you how the story of this lady. So she started buying parts for this lady, but unfortunately, unfortunately, the national service allowance she was getting was enough to even buy every month for them. It meant that she was going to go broke. So she started thinking, and that's where creativity set in. And eventually, she came out with what she called reusable sanitary pad. And if you see what I'm holding, that's one of them. That's what I'm holding here. Reusable sanitary pad. So she did all this, put it together, get some material together, and she did a package. If you see on the table, on the podium, you see this small poly bag here. It has, it has six pieces in it. So she used whatever cotton, whatever, used the material to do this. And then these ladies, young ladies in the villages, could use this part, reuse it, and then and use it again. So in every pouch that he had, she had, she had Dettol and some other chemical that the ladies can use to wash this, and then they can reuse it after some time. Of course, this wasn't the best solution for this kids, but at least she brought a solution. Now, at this event, which when this event, I was an MC for this event, actually. I was the main person moderating the event for almost 700 people in at Golden Chili Pumas here. They gave this lady 47,000 euro with machines, sewing machines and all kinds of machines to produce 3 million pieces to go up north and go and share with the ladies. This is the power of entrepreneurship. They gave her money. They gave her equipment. They gave, they, gave her, they gave her mentors. In fact, I was one of the mentors who were coaching her to be able to build a business out of this. And today, this lady is doing so well, solving problems and making money. You know, So this is what we are talking about as entrepreneurship, as entrepreneurship. And many of you as health professionals, what is it that you are seeing in the environment where you work? What is it that you are seeing in your business that are problems that you can solve? And to be able to do this, we are going to go to the, how do we find problems? How do we find this? And, um, and, and those kind of things. So Hamdia is in business. She was going to be a teacher, but now, apart from doing her teaching, she now goes around the country, educating young girls about sanitary pad and, and menstrual cycles and when to get pregnant, when not to get pregnant, what to do during your menses and all that. And I'm sure many of you health professionals here don't even do this, but this lady is not a nurse. She's not a midwife. She's not a health professional, but she's able to find an opportunity in the health sector and solving problems of people big time. That's an example of entrepreneurship. So now again, she has found, she has made life better. She has made life easier. She has, she has made life faster. She has made life convenient for our young ladies who hitherto would never would have been able to go to school. But at least for six or seven days in a week. In a, in, a, in a month, sorry. In a month, six or seven days, they don't go to school. But this lady has been able to do this for these people. So assuming she's able to help about three million people to go to school. This one person alone would have made dramatic improvement in people's life. What are you looking for? What solution are you seeing? What problem are you seeing? What challenges are you seeing? What are you thinking to do to solve this problem? And how are you going to transform this into a business to start making, by the, making some money by the side? Okay. How about this guy, Lewin? Well, some of you might think that Lewin um, is not selling any product. But I'm telling you, Lewin is solving a big problem in this country. And as a result of the problem that he's solving, he's making very good money. This guy is somebody who would say, in quotes, fucking rich. How did that happen? I want somebody to just please raise your hands and tell me the, the kind of problem that you think Lewin is solving that has made him an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur, and making money for what he does. Please raise your hands and tell me. I want some ideas from here. Yes, Rebecca. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning, sir. He's making us to make people who are sad in the country or in our society to be able to laugh. So if you are depressed or you are sad, and whenever I started watching him with his funny issues, you started laughing, most of issues to you. Wow. So forget nice. about most of your issues. Very good, Becky. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, oh, AC, please go ahead. I'm sure I don't I mention the way. Lydia. Sir, I yes, said Aside solving the mental problem, he's also promoting the uh, local uh, in the movie industry. He's promoting it one way or the other. Okay, very good one. Very good one. Very good one. Who else? Gifty? Thank you. 
Yes. Yes. yes, go ahead. It's good morning. Good morning. He is helping solve, solving our emotional Yeah. Very good. Solving our emotional problems. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. you are very you are very right. I love that. Emotional problems. We have emo everybody's mad in this country, I'm telling you. Everybody's mad. All right. Um Matilda, go ahead. Hello, Matilda. Sir, please. Um he's the, the CEO. He's the CEO of Greater Minds. That's very the name good. of it. The guy has a school. I have a PhD. I don't have a school. Lewin doesn't have GHS. He has yes, a sir. <laughs> you see? You know, so why am I showing this example? I'm showing this example because becoming an entrepreneur does not necessarily have to be having a product. You can also have a service. The way by nature, by his natural gift, is somebody who makes people happy. And he was, he's been able to put, a, put made a, make a business out of his talent and out of, out of his gifts. And that's what has made him rich. In fact, I know, I know a banker in Accra, one of my friends, when he goes to his office, um, when he says he when he when he's very stressed up, all that he do is that he takes his um, uh, takes his earpiece and then plug it into his phone or laptop and start watching some movie by Lewin, and then he's still laughing. He said that's the only way he's able to release stress, stress and tension. So Lewin is dramatically and amazingly solving our emotional problems, and I'm sure you all of you health workers know that as you laugh, you release certain um, um, certain chemicals in your body that makes you relax and makes you much more happier and even reduces your aging. That's what the one is doing for us. So he has gone into himself and uh, uh, been able to expose himself to his creative potential, his gift. Okay, so that's what the has done for us. Next one is, I mean, same thing with Nanama Mabakrao. Same thing. Nanama, as, as we talk to you now, has seven different brands that he's called, he's become brand ambassadors for them. Seven brands, including Hisense. And do, does any of do any of you know how much Hisense is paying her every month? You have no idea. But Nanama doesn't have a PhD. Nanama doesn't have a master's degree. I'm sure. I don't know. No, I may be wrong. But look at her. Look at how how beautiful she's looking. Less stress. So when we go come and talk about the issue about um, finding business opportunities and build a business around that, I'll come to tell you that the number one source of finding a business is in yourself. Number one, numero uno, the first place to find your talent, the, the first place to find a business, a very business that will pay you the money you are looking for. And at the same time, whilst they're paying you doing what you are doing, is look for look at that business from yourself. And a particular example is Nanama. Look at even um, this guy, the footballer, Ronaldo. I heard that recently, I know a football fan, but I heard recently that Ronaldo's cook, the person who actually cooked Ronaldo for Ronaldo, is paid almost 60,000 euro whatever in, in a week. Hey, babe, you put all your salaries together for a whole year and see if it's going to be equal to just the one week salary that you paid to the cook for Ronaldo. Right, what, at all? what at all is it? You see, so when you find your creative potential, you are able to build a solid business out of that. And then when we go to our next topic, I'll just tell you some of these I'm talking to you about. Okay. How about this thing too? This person found the, the story actually goes that the, the, the lady who does this business, her baby died at age nine or six out of malaria. So she asked the nurses and midwives who were there and asked them how why the baby get malaria. And they said, Oh, when, when plastic waste and plastics, the bottles and all those things collect water, it breeds mosquito, and these mosquitoes were the cause of the child's death. The woman said, this is a problem I must solve. I have to find a solution to this particular problem. So you know what she did? She started collecting plastic waste and then turning them into something else. So the first one that you see with a special ice water bag, all those pouches on it, was the first one that she did. So one day, she got an idea again and then started collecting the fan milk uh, waste, like the one you see on the right, and put them in bags. Fan milk saw it, and now they've set this one up as a business. They go around collecting these things and turn them into bags. Maybe you might not buy this bag to use per se. Somebody can buy this and put it in their office just for, for decor purposes. But the fact is that this lady is solving a big issue in this country. Big issue in this country. Plastic waste all over the place. And Pharmac has actually set it up and she's doing this full time. 
you know so it's about how do you find a problem and fixing it how do you find a challenge and fixing it and that's not about fixing it once you're able to fix the problem how do you transform that into a business that makes you money and that keeps you going all the time how about this we all see this tire waste all over the place, collecting water, breeding mosquitoes, so destroying our soil. And then even the worst part of it is when they burn these tires, it seriously affects our climate. I mean, when you see a car tire being burned and you see the amount of smoke that's going into the, into the sky, sometimes it really hurts my heart. But what can you do? Somebody sits down and said, no, I can transform these tires into living room furniture. This furniture you are seeing here is about $1,000. Wow. Most about a thousand Ghana cities. That's what somebody is doing. And actually, the lady, the person doing it, it's a lady. I'll put her, some of her details on, on our page for you to go. You can just go and visit the, see the kind of thing she's doing. Transforming used ties that would have gone to waste our soil, that could have been burnt to destroy our climate, that would have collected water to, to breed mosquitoes to come and kill ourselves. He says, no, 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 no. Let me collect these ties and then transform them into, into living room furniture. And that's what she does. What problem are you seeing? What challenges are you seeing? And how are you going to transform this into a solution for people to buy? You might say that you won't buy this, but see what I've actually ordered a set of this to just put in my in my house. Just to put it, just my that's my desire to just sow a seed into her the idea. And I have a friend also, um, she worked with GIZ. She has bought actually bought a set of this in her in her office. This is creative, this is innovation. Again, let's look at this. Plastic bottles transform into chairs. Look at this, solving problems. Look at the amount of plastic waste you have in this country. Somebody, people have all kinds of ideas, but again, you on this call in this class can also find these ideas and transform them into something else. Okay. Um, this video might not it's too long, can't watch it now, so watch it later on. How about this? Where do we usually find these materials? Please raise your hands and tell me. Where do we usually find these materials? And what do we do with it? When we when we see this material, what do we do with it? Yes, um, Clara. We find it under uh, same stress or the tailors. Yes, and what do they do with it? They usually throw it away. Yes, they throw it away, they burn it, and they cause all kinds of environmental problems for us. But somebody takes these same products and then transform them into wall designs. Simple. Very nice wall designs. And in fact, the better one you can see is this one. Look at the background of this guy. This is an example of how somebody is collecting these waste and transforming them into these kind of back designs. Very beautiful. Very, very beautiful. So now what, how, what, what happens? She only has to probably buy just glue and scissors and be cutting these things. And the rest is just about putting their creativity together and designing the walls of other people. Now, so I'm showing these videos, these pictures, because I want us to understand that whatever we are doing, wherever we are, Wherever we go, every single thing around us, there are opportunities. There are problems that we only have to turn on our entrepreneurial mindset, our entrepreneurial alertness, capitalize, capitalize on these ones, and then find a solution to this. And eventually, you might turn that into some business. Recently, I'm part of a MasterCard project where MasterCard is going around, going, MasterCard is going to train health professionals to now find solutions to the health sector. And the MasterCard is going to fund them. It's, it's actually pioneered by KNUST. And MasterCard is going to give $10,000 as seed capital for any, for any health professional who comes up with an idea that can solve a health problem. I don't know if any of you guys were on the, the first cohort of training they did. They did one in Sunyane, one in Tamale, and then one in Takwadi. You know, and that's what MasterCard is because they see there are a lot of um, health problems that we want our health professionals, they themselves, to find solutions to that. So there are so many opportunities around that. There's, there are so many ways we can dramatically improve society and make money out of that. But the point is, are you ready for it? So that when I, when I tell you that my real passion is not just for you to get, make good grades in this course, but my real passion is for everyone on this call, every single individual, to be able to identify something that you think you are very passionate about, find a problem that you think is worrying you, and then find a solution to that, package that solution into a product or service, and then just get out there and give some customers. And by mere virtue that you find a solution to people's problem, trust me, you would make money. You would make money. And I told you from the day one what I've what I been doing. You make money, I'm telling you. All right. So let me pause here and then uh, we'll see. Is there anybody here on this call who is on the master, who has ever attended any of the MasterCard funded programs, training entrepreneurs? One happened in Sunyane, one happened in Takrade, one happened in Tamale. 
Anybody on this call who is on it, or has anybody heard about it anyway? Has any of you heard about the MasterCard project spearheaded by KNUST? It's called Health Entrepreneurship. So if you are part of just raise your hands and let me know. You can share some experience with us. But any questions up to this point, please? Whilst I change over to go to my other slide and we can talk about what we do today. Oh, let me show you this too. These are bottles. These are bottles that we just throw away. We throw these bottles away. But somebody picks these bottles and they just decorate these bottles in this nice, beautiful thing that you see on the screen. You know? So we, we have too much time to do a lot of things. And I'm sure if you're a health professional actually on this call, you have spare time. You can do this. So assume you're even selling this for 200 Ghana cities. Even 300 Ghana cities. You can go as far as 500 Ghana cities. Depending on the kind of design that you put around this. And people will buy. People are looking for things to just make their lives better. Everyone is looking for something that will make your life easier. Every human being is looking for something that will make your life much more convenient. They are waiting for you. Your money is in their pocket. Your wealth is in their pocket. Please get your antenna on, get your entrepreneurial alertness on, open your eyes, open your ears, listen to people, observe what people are doing, because your money and your prosperity are in the pockets of other people. You only have to do what you need to do, get some solution to problems, get it marketed properly, build a business around that, and eventually you'll be more. It can get to a point where even your part-time job, like doing this kind of bottles, will even much more than your full-time job. And eventually you can retire into it when you want to, or you can resign and do it full-time. That's my real desire for you. Number one, is just make sure you get good grades. Number two, to build a business around what you are, what you are talking about this semester. Most importantly, to make some additional income to supplement your, your regular income, to make your life better. And number two, if you're able to do it well and build a systemized business, you then can be able to retire into it at age 60 and live a comfortable, healthier, wealthier life. That is my desire for this. Any questions up to this point, please? Any questions whilst I change my slides, please? Any questions? All right. So if there are no questions, let me just change my slide and go to talk about opportunities. Uh, what is this? Okay. So now um, we are going to talk about opportunity identification. How do we find the opportunity? And please take note of this. To become an entrepreneur, there are stages that you need to go through. It's a process. So please take your pen and paper and write this process I'm going to give you. It's not on this slide. So let me just show you the process. Number one step in the entrepreneurial journey is to determine if you want to be an entrepreneur. What we call the entrepreneurial assessment. Your entrepreneur. Uh, Will you be an entrepreneur? Do you, do you want to be an entrepreneur? Do you have the desire to become one? Can you do it? So that's the first thing that we are looking at. That's the first stage in the entrepreneurial journey. So at this point, we are sorry. We didn't hear, I didn't hear it well. Okay, I was good. right. Okay. So I'm saying that the first thing to talk about to, about entrepreneurship, there, there are stages, it's a process. And the first stage is to look at, okay, I try to meet everybody, but they keep on meeting themselves. I don't know why it happens this way. Please just give me one second. Let me try and just get this thing done. Okay, so the first stage in entrepreneurial process is the decision to become an entrepreneur. The decision to become an entrepreneur. The decision hey. to become an entrepreneur. The first one. The second stage in entrepreneur journey is an identification of business idea or opportunity. The identification. Please, why do you still keep on muting, keep on muting yourself? I mute you here and then you still keep on muting yourself. If you're not speaking, please don't do that. You distract everybody in the class. Mary, please meet yourself. All right, so the second stage is idea identification or opportunity identification. That is how do you find the idea to start a business? Because we define that, that entrepreneurship is about identifying a problem or an opportunity and then transforming that into for building a solution to solve that problem and then build a business out of that. So the first stage is to decide to become an entrepreneur. 
The second stage is to identify an idea or an opportunity. The third stage of the entrepreneurial journey is to the organization of limited resources. The organization of limited resources. Third stage. The organization of limited resources. Fourth stage. The formulation of a solution in the form of a product or service. Fourth stage. The formulation of a product or service to solve the problem or take advantage of the opportunity. The fifth stage. Then the fourth stage. Is, is, to, fast. is to develop a product or service to solve the problem or take advantage of the opportunity. When you come out with actually a product, something to solve the problem that people are seeing, like the ones I've just shown you. Like Hamdia, he saw a, she saw a problem with women with menstrual, young ladies with menstrual cycle and all that. And then she came up with a solution. And the solution she brought was a product. The reasonable sanitary part. Somebody sees that bottles are thrown away, it collects water and breeds mosquito. It's a problem. She brings a solution by collecting these bottles and decorating these bottles into artifacts or into decors, into something that you can actually use to de decorate your room or your office. So that's a, that's a state too. Find a solution in the form of a product or service to solve the problem or to take advantage of the opportunity. The next stage is to launch and market your business. Is to launch and market your business. Launch and market your business. Because now you have the product, you have the business. How do people get to know about you? You must know marketing. And the next stage is how do you manage the business? And that's where most of us have find ourselves wanting. How do you manage the business to make it a business? The fact that you have a product, the fact that you have built a pharmacy shop, the fact that you have a reusable sanitary part doesn't make it a good business. We must know how to manage a business, the day-to-day -day operations of the business. And that's the only way you can make sustainable money. And then the final stage is exit strategy. Exit strategy means that at some point, you want to sell the business to somebody else and just go away with it, or you still want to make sure that you stay in this business forever and ever till you die and leave it for your parents, your, your, your children to take over. So you either sell or you build a legacy business. That's the final stage. Either building a legacy business or selling the business. Building a legacy business that you, is that you are building a business that can stay with you forever and ever and ever and ever. Even when you die, you are dead and gone. Like Cook, for example. Cook built a legacy business. Guinness built a legacy business. These, these companies are way years old. The owners or the originators or the entrepreneurs who started that idea decided that they were going to build a business that will live after them. And today, most people are enjoying Guinness because somebody built a business way some hundreds of years ago. How about Coca-Cola? Years ago, way years ago, but it's still there. Still there. Or Can if you don't... Come again with points, the, but the, point, the last point is build a legacy business, the exit strategy. Exit strategy. And the exit strategy, there are two ways. It's either you build a legacy business or you sell the business. And building a legacy business is you build a business in such a way that it's going to live after you, even when you're dead and gone. And we get an example of Guinness and then Coca-Cola. Or you build the business to sell it. At some point, when you after pension and you think that you are 70 years old, 80 years old, you don't want to worry yourself again. Your kids are not interested in the business. You just sell it and go away. We don't see people selling business so much in our part of the world. But in America, people actually build business from scratch because oh. they want to sell it after a period. Okay. All right. Um, so those are stages of building a um, Can I take a few questions? Esther. Sir, please, can you Sir, please, please come? Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Sir, please, Sir, can you please, share the screen for us? Again. For the stages, please raise your hands. Please raise call. your hands. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. At the time. The person speaking now is Esther. Esther, go ahead. Sir, please, good morning. Good morning, Esther. Sir, please, with the stages in entrepreneurship, can you please share the screen for us? Because you are far away from us. We can't write. And we don't get it to. It's not in my, it's not in my screen, so I can't share yes. it. Ah, it's okay. Not, it's not my screen, so I'm giving it to then, you. Then please go back again for us. For, for us to, to document something. We'll do that. Who got Thank it all you. to give it to us, please? Who got all the points? 
Raise your hands. Let me... Please raise your hands and let me allow you to speak first before you talk so that we don't distract everybody. All right, Grace, go ahead. Yes, please. I got all. Yes, please go ahead. The first point is, is the decision to become an entrepreneur. Okay. Second Take your time. Let them write it again. Okay. Repeat. Decision to become an entrepreneur. Second one. <laughs> Identification of business idea or opportunity. Repeat. Identification of business idea or opportunity. Now you are the lecturer, so we are in charge. Yeah. <laughs> All right, third point. Organization of limited resources. Repeat, Esther. Agree, sorry. Organization of limited resources. All right, next point. Formulation of a product or service to take advantage of the opportunity or solve the problem. Mm -hmm. Formulation of a product or service to take advantage of the opportunity or solve the problem. Good teacher. Hmm. Please, can I continue? Yes, go to the fifth one. Um, launch or launch and market your business. That's the first point. Yep. Launch and market your business. Next point. How do you manage the business? Make it manage the help. Manage your business. Manage the business. Manage the business. <laughs> Manage the business. Then the last point, the exit strategy. That's building a legacy business or selling it. Very good. I'm happy somebody got it all. So um, I'm, so I'm sure we got it all now. Right. So I mean, one of you can. There's something somebody was doing the last time in our class last semester. As we go out along some of these things, the person typed actually typed them in the chat box for other people to see. That was very interesting. So anybody can try to help us on that one. All right, good. Um, I see hands up. Anita, please go ahead. Um, sir, please, can you explain the organization of limited resources for me? All right, good. You can help to explain the organization of limited resources. Please raise your hand. Who wants to explain okay, organization of limited resources? Anybody wants to try? All right, Gifty. Yes, sir. Please, with how I understand it, uh, with the organization, once you start a business, you want to start a business and then you organize, um, your, you identify the type of business you have to, you want to go into. You need to be able to organize the things that you need, human resources, your finances, the equipment you'd be using. So you need to organize those resources that you'll be using in order to start up the business. That's how I understand. So you need to have all those things in place. Have a budget of how, what and what you need to start up their business. That's how I understand the organization of the limited resources. Very good. Thank you very much, Gifty. That's it. That's very good. All right. Um, Salah, 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 sorry. Salah, okay, please. Sir. Yes, okay, please. sir. Uh, as uh, my sister just said, but I'm giving an example. Assuming I want to do a, a maternity home or a clinic, I need to get the building where I'll be doing my consulting, where we'll be doing deliveries, and then I can't do the work alone. The human resource, as she said, I need to get somebody who'll be doing labs for me, somebody who'll be uh, uh, recording them for me, and then uh, I need to get somebody who'll be cleaning the facility for me. And also, you have to get uh, money that you start with because as you are starting, you will be paying those who will be helping you do the work because 
you know, it's not when you start that you get people that will be coming and then you'll be getting a lot of money. So you need to get some uh, money that will be you be using to pay your your staff. That is the example I want to also add to what she said. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much, Salah. That's a good example as well. Okay, so that's what you've just said. Once you have the idea, you must get things to get the job done. And the reason why I, we added that word limited is that resources are not in abundance. Even though they are in abundance, at the time when you use them to, to use them for a specific activity, they were very, very limited. So how do you creatively put all these resources together to make sure that you get a job done? And a job in this, in this case, solving the problem you're actually seeing. Okay. So for example, like we've said, you need money, you need people, you need technology, you need land, you need, you need all kinds of things to be able to make sure that thing is done. As an entrepreneur or somebody who wants to go into this kind of venture, you must find a way to bring all of them together. And I'm sure many of us have seen where I've heard where people say that I've not started my business because I don't have money. It's not because the person doesn't have money. It's because the person is not innovative enough. The person is not innovative enough. Of course, for example, if you want to start a maternity home, you will need money. But is there a way to start this business in a way somehow before you get to build your own maternity home? How about you, st you starting just going to church to church, mosque to mosque, mosque, society to society, educating women who are pregnant about pregnancy? Ultimately, you want to build a maternity home. That's your ultimate goal. You have, the, you have an ultra modern maternity home one day. And now you don't have the money. So what do you do? You have a plan, and another, with the plan that you have now, in the first one year, you are going to go to homes. No, not homes per se. You are going to go to churches. You are going to go to mosques. You are going to go to associations. You are going to go to women groups, market women associations. You are going to go to them once in a while to educate them about pregnancy, how to get pregnant. When you get pregnant, the things you must do, the things you must not do. When they're going for your antenatal or postnatal, what do you do? What do you do? So you're educating people around these things. And it will shock you to know that as you start doing these things, eventually somebody in the group where you're actually talking to them would ask you, oh, mama, so do you have a maternity home so that when I'm getting pregnant, I can come to you? You said no. Then say, oh, why? You are in labor. Why don't you have a maternity home? You say, well, I'm trying to put it, I have a plan, but I'm looking for money. And it will shock you how God would have brought this person to you to give you every single dime you need to build this maternity home. The issue that I find with most of us who haven't started our own business based on the skills that we have, based on the gifts and talent that we have, is because we have not exposed our talents and our ideas. We haven't exposed them yet. We have not as Grace, please, you are writing on the on the screen. Stop it. Grace Yawa, you are drawing lines on the screen. I don't know who is doing it. Either your son or child is doing it. Please, Grace, stop it. Okay? So you see that yeah, we are not there because many of us we haven't exposed ourselves. We have not exposed ourselves. So organizing mm -hmm. mean that yes, first of all, come let me be sorry. First of all, decide to become an entrepreneur. That's the first thing you must do. And then once you have decided to become an entrepreneur, <clears throat> number two, you must look out for what you want to do. <clears throat> what problems have you seen? What opportunities have you seen that you want to take advantage of? <clears throat> what do you want to do? That's the second stage. The third stage is that now um, um, organize resources for it. And at the point when you organize the resource, that's where you write your business plan. So inside the business plan, you are going to look for all the resources that you need to build that business together as a business. And then next, you formulate the product. What exactly are you going to do? And then you go ahead, you, you, do, uh, you, you, you launch the product, you manage the business, and eventually you decide to build a legacy business or you sell the business. And along the line, I'm going to use my own example. And I told you last time, I used my own example to show you what has brought me up to this point. Every one of us have something in us that we can use to dramatically transform society and become very, very wealthy about it. But unfortunately, I think the biggest challenge we all have is that we have not exposed our, our business, no, our business idea. We have not exposed our talents and our gifts enough for people to see, to even invest in what we want to do. Okay? All right. Um, Salah, your hand is up again. Is that a question or is it the old one? Okay, I think it was the old one. All right, so let me introduce you to this very important topic, which is supposed to have been, by this time, we should have gone way beyond this, but I'm going to introduce you to this 
um, this topic, uh, recognizing opportunities and generating ideas. So that's basically point number two, technically. Point number two, yeah. stage number two in the entrepreneurial journey is what you have just seen on your screen. How do you identify an opportunity? How do you generate business idea? How do you find the problems in society? And how do you go about helping people to solve their problems and you making money out of that? Okay, all right. So in this, in this, in this topic, we are going to look at the difference between opportunity and idea. We are going to look at the various approaches of how to um, how to find these opportunities and these ideas. Again, we want to look at the personal characteristics of entrepreneurs. What makes them entrepreneurs? What makes somebody an entrepreneur? For Sina, please, you are writing on the screen. Please stop it. We discuss the characteristics of entrepreneurs. If you say somebody is an entrepreneur, what the, what? How do we know this person is, or how do you even know yourself to be an entrepreneur? And this two point three question point here will explain point number one: decision to become an entrepreneur. Because once we get to understand the characteristics of entrepreneur, you have to decide: do you want to go on this route? Because it's not a it's not a, it's not a simple journey as we see it. Okay. And then finally, we identify and describe techniques entrepreneurs use to generate ideas. Okay. All right. So, all right. So, uh, I want somebody to read this for us. Um, please volunteer. Raise your hands. And let me call you. Raise your hands and let me call you to read for us. All right. So let's talk to Edith. Please go ahead, Edith. Entrepreneurship, the result of discipline, systematic process of applying creativity and innovation to the needs and opportunities in the marketplace. Go ahead. Entrepreneurs connect their creative ideas with the purposeful action in the structure of a business. Good. The That's process right. entrepreneurs connect their creative ideas with the purposeful action and structure of a business. The process by which an individual decides to become an entrepreneur searches for an idea, opportunity, and gathers all the needed resources to launch and manage Have we lost in it? The process by which an individual decides to become an entrepreneur searches for idea, opportunity, and gathers all the needed resources to launch and manage a successful venture is called the entrepreneurial process. Very good. So that's what I've just explained with the seven steps that I gave you. Okay. So one, don't forget that entrepreneurship is a process. It's a, it's a discipline that is a systematic process. It's a step-by-step -step process. If you don't understand this one, you can't be an entrepreneur. If you don't buy into this, you can't become an entrepreneur. It's a process. You don't just get, wake up one day and say, yay, yay, I'm an entrepreneur. You can't do that. It's a process. And I've given you the seven-stage process that, that we just talked about. So that process, that process, you are actually finding way creative, creative ways and innovative ways to solve the problems of society. And with all the examples that I showed you, with Lewin, with the car tires, with the plastic waste, and then the, the waste material are the same stresses. These are people who found innovative solutions to the problem that we have in society. Every one of these guys found an innovative solution to the problem that we all found. We are, we all have. Okay, so now the entrepreneur really connects the idea with a purpose that put together. Come, come, the end result is a business structure. It's a business that you actually build. So someone will ask them, are all entrepreneurs businessmen or are all businessmen entrepreneurs? We'll come to answer this question very soon. But the point is that whatever the situation is, once somebody find, decides to be an entrepreneur, number two, he finds a problem and solves it, and then eventually start making out of money out of that, the person becomes an, a business person or becomes an entrepreneur. Any questions up to this point, please? Just to give us some more backgrounds to this topic. Okay. All right. So now, deciding, we, we have gone through this already. Deciding to become an entrepreneur, identify an idea, conducting feasibility analysis, preparing your business plan, sourcing for funding, and launching your business. This is also another way of looking at what I just gave you. Okay. These are the same process that we go through. So you decide to become an entrepreneur. You look for the ideas, you conduct feasibility analysis to see if the idea is visible. We are going to go through all this through this semester. And you can see how interesting this thing is going to be. Okay. But the most important thing we should understand is that every one of us here, so long as we are a human being, and so long as we live on this planet Earth, 
there are problems that you and I need to solve, period. No questions asked, no explanation made. There are problems everywhere around us that you and I need to find solutions to them. From today, and at the end of this whole semester, this course, please never point fingers at anybody and say that the person has not solved your problem. If the person is not solving that problem, please go ahead and find a solution to it. And by being able to organize the resources and capitalizing on that and building a business out of that, you see that the pointing figures that you were doing, the blame game that you were doing is not the issue. In my life as of today, I've come to decide and I've come to believe that the surest, the safest, and the most sustainable way to take any human being out of poverty in this country, globally, everywhere, it was to help the person to turn on the entrepreneurial alertness mind, period. The surest, the safest, the most sustainable way, and the most profitable way to get human beings out of poverty is to empower them with entrepreneurship. Because once you're able to empower them with entrepreneurship, you are going to help them to know how to fish and not how to eat fish. Once you're able to help them to understand how to find problems and develop solutions to solve these problems, you have helped them to become independent to the point where they can now find ways to take care of themselves. But many of us, we want to be spoon-fed. Spoon feeding days are over. If you want to really want to live a good life, Spoon needs to just want people to feed you and feed you and feed you, like we are allowing the government to pay us, pay us, pay us, pay us. The day our salaries are not enough and we think the government is not paying us well, we all go on the street. But going on the street would only increase your salary at a certain percentage. Quarter, 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 quarter three months, one year down the line, you see that the money they increase your salary with is not even enough again. You go back to the old story again. And then you go back on a looter. And then you they increase the salary again. After one year, the money is not enough again. You go on a looter. How long can we continuously be on a looter? When we, if we look down deep down within ourselves, we can find innovative solutions to turn on our entrepreneurial mindset and then build some business for ourselves and take ourselves out of poverty. So the easiest, the fastest, the surest, the most profit profitable way and the most sustainable means to get individuals out of poverty is to build the entrepreneurial alertness, period. And I'm a living testimony to this. I don't know what I'm talking about. If you look at all these people that I mentioned to you, Lewin and the IMD and all those people, these guys have become very rich, not because somebody is, is paying their money as salary, because they decided that if you have to be, it's up to them. So I'm going to go through all these seven processes or six processes and see how things go, okay? Now, deciding to become an entrepreneur, um, who would volunteer to read? Please, you can raise your hands and ask me questions as we move along with it. Just raise your hands and then I'll help you with it, all right? Gifty, please read for us. Deciding to become an entrepreneur. To become an entrepreneur, one needs to consider the, char the characteristics of successful entrepreneurs. The drawbacks or challenges of becoming an entrepreneur and the benefit that he or she stands to gain once the business gets established. Very good. So now you, you remember the seven step stage that we gave you earlier on. The first one was to decide to become an entrepreneur. And to be able to decide that, there are three stages. There are three stages to do this. One is look out for the characteristics. What are the features of successful entrepreneurs? What, what makes them entrepreneurs? And once you get to know about their characteristics, you see if those characteristics are also part of you, if you have those characteristics. If you, those characteristics are about you, then it means that you want to become an entrepreneur. Then you look at the drawbacks or the challenges of becoming an entrepreneur. And again, it's not, a, it's not an easy journey. So now you look at all the challenges, the pluses, the minuses, and all these about people who are entrepreneurs, they'll tell their stories. And I'm sure many of you have heard stories about entrepreneurs. Then finally, you look at the benefits of becoming an entrepreneur. So once you know the characteristics, and you know the challenges, and you know the benefits, you say, okay, oh, this thing... I beg this one here, look my game, oh, I can't do this. Then you just close your eyes and just go and work for full-time employee for a government work. And then you retire at age 60, you wait for another 30 years to 90 years old and you die and you go. But I bet you, if you become an entrepreneur, you look at the characteristics, you look at the challenges, and you say, oh, these are challenges that are normal challenges with life. And then the benefits are huge. Let me become an entrepreneur. You retire at age 60, you have a business by the side, you even live up to 100 because now you are happy, healthier, and living a better life after even the pension. 
So we look at all these things as we go along this semester. Okay. And I think I mentioned this to you already. Any opportunity, any business you want to do must have these seven critical characteristics. Better, easier, faster, cheaper, convenient or new or profitable. I think I've added about two more here, uh, uh, plus that first one that I show you. So the idea or the entrepreneurial journey you want to be on should be better, should make life better, should make life easier, should make life faster, should make things cheaper, should make life convenient, and maybe what you're bringing can be a new thing altogether. And most importantly, it must be profitable. That's the entrepreneurial journey. Any of these seven, seven characters that you see here about any idea could make you an entrepreneur, could make you some good money. Okay? All right. So please be asking your questions in the chat box if you want to. You can drop your questions in the chat box and I'll always read them for you to, to know. Um, any questions up to this point, please? Any questions? Any comments? Is there anything that you want me to explain further that you didn't understand? All right, so let's move on. There are no more questions. Now let's talk about opportunity. And I'm sure maybe we'll do about 10 minutes and we'll close because it's almost time. Um, who wants to volunteer to read what you see on the screen for me? Business opportunity identification. One, opportunity identification and evaluation is a very difficult task. Most good business opportunities do not suddenly appear, but rather results from one, an entrepreneur's alertness to possibilities. Two, or in some case, the establishment of mechanisms that identify potential opportunities. Very good. So an opportunity is anything that comes along your way that has favorable. Uh, uh, okay. okay. So now we should want, we should all understand that opportunity don't just happen. Or no, you don't see somebody with a business and say, oh, the person is doing well in the business. The person might have gone through some, some processes. Okay. So it's a very difficult task. I'm telling you, it's a very difficult thing that most of us have to do. But the most important thing is that if you want to be one, you must turn on your alertness to possibilities. You must constantly be looking around you, observing things, listening to people, and see what, what are the things people are talking about, what are the concerns, what are the challenges. What are their pain points? What is it that people are complaining about? That eventually sets you in the space of entrepreneurship. And in some cases, the establishment of mechanisms that can identify these things. There are people who are only into research. They are constantly researching, looking for market insight, looking for issues that people are talking about. These are professional guys who constantly be looking for these things. These guys can also give us ideas as we move along with life. Okay? So that's something about opportunities. All right. Somebody else continue to read for me, please. Please raise your hand. Somebody else wants to try. Uh, who wants I continue? To... No, let's call Prisla. Give you thank you very much. Prisla, continue. Okay. Business opportunity identification continuation. At the heart of entrepreneurial processes, process is an opportunity. Is, at the heart of entrepreneurial process is an opportunity. A business opportunity has the qualities of being. One, attractive. Two, durable. Three, time and four, is anchored in the product which creates or adds value for its buyers or end users. Five, finding a good business idea is the first step in converting a creativity into a business opportunity. Thank you. Very good. So at the heart of the business entrepreneurial process is opportunity or is a problem. An opportunity is nothing. Please write this down. I'm defining opportunity for you. Opportunity is any favorable set of circumstances or favorable set of circumstances. Opportunity is favorable set of circumstances. That avail itself. It's a very favorable set of circumstances that avails itself to create a product or service to create a product or service and turning that into a business. Any favorable set of circumstances, anything that comes your way that avail itself for you to find a solution or to build a business around that. So for example, if you look at COVID-19, 
COVID-19 was an opportunity. Even though it was a bad opportunity, it was, it's, it's negative. But it was a time when people took advantage of the, of the situation. I remember I bought a, one box of nose masks for 200 Ghana cities when COVID started. And then way back, I think 2021 or so, we saw this same woman who was selling the, the um, nose masks at 200 Ghana cities saying to us that a boy is so, a boy is so. To the point where we could even buy a whole box of nose mark for 10 Ghana cities. What happened? At the time when COVID-19 was, was at its peak, that was a time that was a great opportunity. And people capitalized on that. But at the time when COVID-19 had gone and we were all okay, now everybody, everybody was fine. Nobody needed it. It wasn't a favorable set of circumstances again. So now they told us, a boy is so, a boy is so. Okay, so we're going to talk about this many more as we go along this. But the most important thing we need to understand is that when you find any of these ideas, number one, that idea must be attractive. Number two, this idea must be durable. Number three, it must be timely. Number four, it must be anchored or should be a product or service that creates value for the buyer. And then finally, if we're able to see, qualify all these things, eventually what happens is that this idea or this whatever you have come up with would eventually turn itself into a business opportunity. What does it mean to be attractive? Attractive then means that whatever idea that you have seen, whatever problem that you have seen that you want to solve, whatever opportunity that you have seen that you want to capitalize on that to create value for it, it might be something that is to you, by you as a person, your values and your ethics should confirm it. It should be something that you yourself like. And number two, it must be attractive to society, meaning that society must accept the idea. Society must see the idea as something that, is, that conforms to the norms and regulations of the society, especially with the code of ethics or the code of conduct, whatever it is for society. So attractiveness has two components. One is that the idea or the opportunity or the business should be attractive to you, the human being. And number two, the idea must be attractive to society or to the target market. Let me give an example. I'm sure some of us know prostitution. We know people who are who are into prostitution. It's a business. I'm sure I'm telling you, it's a it's a billion dollar business. We don't see it here in Ghana, but in Holland, in Holland, there's a place called the red light. Red light is a zone, it's a lane where only prostitutes are. They are in their cases, they are in their they are in their they are in their rooms. You only look and, and then in front of their rooms, there are glass doors, there are glass windows where the women have lights in there. They, they dress somehow, however they want to dress, and they come and stand in the glass with light on them in the night. So you walk around that street, and you'll be looking at all those ladies. Now, you look at all those ladies, you see the one that you think fits your kind of woman that you want to do whatever with. You now know, you, you go and turn on the light. The light will be in front of the door. You go and press the light. The light goes up. The lady goes out back into the room, and then the lady opens the door for you, enter the room, you close the door, and you do whatever you want to do. When you finish, you pay the person, you go away. It's a business in Holland. Anybody who has been in Holland will tell you, I've seen this with my own eyes. Not that I go, I wanted to practice it, no. I didn't go to try it, but I've seen it with my own eyes. And then in that same street, the red light street, you will see policemen sitting on horses, walking around. They don't, they don't, they don't talk about this prostitution. It's legalized. It's an attractive business. But bring it back to Ghana. Bring it back to Kumasi. Can anybody who is a prostitute really would go out openly to tell people that I am a prostitute, so please come and sleep with me and give me money? Of course, now today we have the hookup and all those things coming up. But even they, they know that hookup is part of prostitution. Why can't they publicize it so well, like doing the big time business? Because to the individual himself, even though it's a business, they themselves, they are not too sure about it. They don't like it. Maybe they don't like it, but they are doing it for money. But again, even if they like it as individuals, they want to do it. How do society look at that kind of business? Society frowns at it. So the no. first thing they are saying here is that the business idea that you are trying to come up with must be attractive to you and it must be attractive to society. Period. Nothing more, nothing else. And this is contextual. Contextual in the sense that when you go to Hollywood, this factor here doesn't matter. But in Ghana, in Bogatanga, in Tamale, in Sunyane, in Kumase, in Takarade, in Cape Coast, it may not be attractive as we see it to be. Look at Hamdia's example, for example. Hamdia, the lady who came up with the, uh, the reusable sanitary pad. The idea is attractive to her because she's a lady. She's a woman and she sees the value of the, and the, and the importance of having sanitary pad for you with you every single month of the person's life. 
It's attractive to her. And again, society also frowns on every lady who is never able to take care of herself when she menstruates and she sells herself up. No woman wants her to want, want to sell herself up during her menstruation. Nobody, no woman wants to do this. So again, society frowns on it to the point where society wants people to be clean and neat and nice. So once you bring this product to society, they will take it. So the idea number one or the opportunity number one must be attractive. It must be attractive to you. It must be attractive to society. Number two, the idea must be durable. Durability means that the idea that you have must last long enough to make money for itself and to make money for you. Because it's going to cost you money to start the business in the first place. So if the idea cannot last for a long time, for you to start making money to pay for itself and make pay money for you, why then did you go into the business? It might be durable. It might be long lasting. Number three, the idea must be timely. Can anybody help me to explain how the idea must be timely based on the first stuff I explained to you now? I've explained to you attractiveness. I've explained to you the durability. How, why should, why should the idea be timely? Please raise your hands and help me. Why should the idea be timely? Gifty, please go ahead. Yes, sir, please. Just as the example you gave with the COVID issue, with the sale of the face masks, during that time, it was it was a timely idea because face masks was one of the preventive, wearing face masks was one of the preventive measures you, yeah, to prevent you from, you, we, we have to adapt in order to prevent us from getting the COVID. So at that time, Face mask was like the ish. It was the main thing on the market. That was why it was highly priced at that time. But when it came, when the COVID came down and it was being stabilized, now it wasn't really of much concern whether you wear face mask or not. So I'll say that during um, with that context, the idea was timely in the time that COVID was at its peak. But it wasn't any more timely when um, it wasn't really much needed when. Um, COVID came down or was now stabilized. That's how I understand. Great, Gifty. Good example. I like that. Thank you. All right, let's talk to Ajua uh, Dauda. Sorry. Sir. Yes, please. It could also be in a way like if you want to enter into a business. So uh, let's assume that it's raining season. I want to enter into my business. So I looked at what I'm supposed to do at this particular time. So I decide that I'm going to sell raincoats. And it's, it only occurs during the rainy season, especially we those in the north here. So if I'm doing the, uh, the raincoat business and it's not in the rainy season, which means if it is a dry season, I won't get anybody to purchase it. So it's a timely business. Very good. Very good example. I love this too. You guys are making me very happy today. Thank you. All right. So we just explained them. The idea you have must be launched at a time when it's needed. Because if you don't bring it at a time when people need it, forget it. Nobody will buy it from you. And point number four, the idea must be anchored in the product which creates or adds value for its buyers or end users. So that means that whatever idea that you have, it should be either a product or it should be a service or the two. So, for example, Hamdia, who brought a reusable hand sanitary pad, created a product to solve a problem for the buyers or the users. Lewin has created a service to help make people happy. Because when Lewin is on stage and is making us laugh, you can't touch his voice, you can't touch his human, you can't touch whatever he's doing. It's service that he's provided. The difference between service and product is that services cannot be touched, it cannot be stored, it cannot be transferred, it can only, only be experienced. But for a product, you can hold it, you can touch it, you can use it, you can transfer it to somebody else. So this fourth point says that whatever solution that you are bringing in, it should either be a tangible item called a product or it should be an intangible item called a service. But many times, the two always go hand in hand. Because even if you go and eat in a restaurant food, which is tangible, which is a product, the service that they give to you, the ambience, the, the, the temperature of the room, the smell in the room, the way the waitress will come and serve you is also a service. So you put that together, we call it service product. So the fourth, 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 the fourth point says that every opportunity that you see to bring solution to this world must be a product or should be a service. And once you put all these things together, you cannot transform that into a business and eventually you start making money out of that. This is the meaning of an opportunity.
And from next week, we are going to look at the various sources of looking for an opportunity. What are the various ways that an individual or group of people can come together to look for opportunities or ideas to start a business with it? How do we find these and be able to come out with a business with that? Okay. All right. Anita, go ahead. Sir, can you please go over uh, the anchor in the product which create or add value and please with the example? Okay, very good. So what we are saying is that now you have seen an opportunity. You, want, you, you, you have seen a problem that you want to solve. The problem that you currently want to solve, that solution that you are bringing should be a product. Anchored in the product means that it should be a product. And that product we are saying is something that should be tangible. Something people can hold, they can touch, they can feel, they can transform, like they can transfer to somebody else. Tangible, like mango. So the example that I gave is that you see the Hamdia lady that I told you about just recently, about she um, creating we service on the trip pad. She created a product. So her solution is anchored in a product. A product. But we are talking about Lewin. Lewin is also solving a problem. Lewin is also giving us a solution. But the solution that she's giving to us, Lewin is giving to us, is a service. And a service is anything that gives, gives benefit to people. But you can't touch it. You can't store it. It's intangible. Okay? So all we are saying is that whatever solution you are coming up with should be either a product or should be a service. Is that okay, Anita? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, good. All right. Hello, so, sir. Yes, please. Uh, who wants to speak? I didn't know who the person was, so... Okay. So we... Okay, please go ahead. Sir, please, I was asking if you can take a loan to start a business if you don't have the enough resources. A very dangerous move. Taking loan to start a business from scratch is very, very dangerous. Of course, people have tried that and it worked. And the reason is very simple. When you take a loan, you pay interest plus in, uh, you pay the principal and you pay you pay interest on that. Now, at a time when you start a business, the first two, three, four months, you will not make enough profit, not sales. You will not make enough profit to pay off the loan. So technically, for the first month or the second month, you're going to use the sales that you have made in the business to be paying back the loan. So more like it, you are going to use the loan that you have taken from the bank to pay back the same back loan. So quarter, 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 six months, eight months, nine months down the line, the money that you borrowed would all be used to pay back the loan and the, the principal and interest. There'll be no money in the bank. There'll be no money in the, in the, in the shop. There'll be no product to sell and eventually the business will collapse. Unless you work as a full-time health professional, you start a business, you take a loan with your salary and you use a salary to finance the business but then you use your salary to repay back the loan without taking money from the business. That one, I would agree. But even then, be careful. Because what happens is that the moment you use your salary to, to take you, you use your salary to take loans to, to start a business, your salary is going to reduce by the repayment monthly that you're going to pay for the loan. So your money that you used to take, want to take care of yourself, will, so for example, you are taking 3,000 cities a month. And then you are using a uh, thousand cities a month to pay back the loan every month as your salary. You are going to be left with only two thousand cities to take care of yourself. So this means that you are going to struggle as a family. But because you have a family, you, because you have a business by the side, you easily go to the business and go and take money in the business and start using it for the family. So even that one is still very dangerous. But it's a way to go around it. If you want to use a loan to take a business, please come to me. That one is you and me. We will talk about that. Okay. So um it's okay, dangerous. Sir. Then it means that we being health workers and then taking loans from bank is not it's not advisable. Depends on what you are using the loan for. I've taken loan with my salary at Garden City before, and I told myself that from 2015 till I die, I will never use my salary to take loan again because I went through serious financial problems. Serious. So I've promised myself, me, I will never take loan with my salary anymore. Whatever it takes, it has to be, I'm going to work and make money and do and pay whatever I want to pay. So it depends on what you take the money to use it for. I took the money to go and build business. It didn't work. So I, I learned the lessons. Okay. So it's, it's something else. So we can discuss it later on as some part of the, of, the, of the course. But it's very risky to take a loan to start a business. Very, very risky. That one I can assure you. Very, very risky. All right. Any more questions?
All right. So, so what the... an example? Oh, okay. Go ahead, Anita. So what about taking a loan to build a house? <laughs> that one's another discussion. Time is up. Will you... Please remind me first in next week when we meet. I want to explain this to you. Okay. Yeah, very it, good. It, it's not advisable, right? No, not now. Let's, let me explain next Dangerous week. Dangerous action. <laughs> we'll discuss that next week. Okay. All right. So uh, we went to class here. But I want to um, tell you that, please, be let's be reading. Tomorrow, by, by close of day, let me know from the classroom whatever we are doing with the handout that you want. Very, very important to me because it takes time to do this. And then we'll take it out from there also. And again, if anybody wants to go into any kind of...